How can somebody have a spirit inside of you is just mischief. Your lifestyle is mischief. That is what you are known for. You are known for taking this head and this head and clashing. And then you are happy over it. Legacy. What kind of human being are you? Praise the Lord. And it is these legacies that we have that have given birth to, I mean, this Bible that has produced this Bible for us that becomes a guide for us. The Bible calls them, we call them heroes of faith in Hebrew chapter 11. Praise the Lord. But we call them, we the theologians, we call them heroes of faith. Praise the Lord. They are heroes of faith because they left legacies behind. Commentaries. We have commentaries on all of them about Abel. We have Abel, the heroes that left legacies. Abel. We have Enoch. We have Noah. We all know who they are. We have Abraham and Sarah. We have Isaac. We have Jacob. Joseph. We have Moses' parents. They left us a legacy. They saw there was something special about that boy. And at the risk of their life, they saved him. They kept him alive. Praise the Lord. Moses himself left a legacy. Joshua left a legacy. Rahab left a legacy. And in verse 32, Let's read from verse 32. This is the way the Bible put it. Hebrew chapter 11. It said, And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon. More, more of them. Gideon. And of Barak. And of Samson. And of Jephthah. Of David also. And Samuel. And of the prophets. I hope you know why he mentioned Jephthah. What was the legacy he left? Hallelujah. He swore to his heart and changed not. He swore to his heart. He made a vow. If I go to this battle and I come back alive and we defeat these Amorites, the first thing that will come out of my house, I will offer it to you a bond offering. And God was looking at him. And he allowed him to win the battle. And as he was coming back, rejoicing, we have won. The first thing that came out of his house was his only child, a daughter. Did he change his mind? No. That story is a legacy for Jephthah. For us to learn from. Anytime they mention Jephthah, nobody remembers any other thing but this particular action. Praise the Lord. Verse 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, we are made strong, wax valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection see the legacy they left behind just so that they will make it in the rapture and others had trial of cruel mockings and scourges like apostle paul yeah moreover of bonds and imprisonment they were stoned they were sown asunder Go and read how all these disciples ended their lives. How all those early apostles, all of them, how they were killed. They were tempted. We are slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And this all, having obtained a good 
report legacy from faith they didn't even receive the promise they had not even because they were waiting for us god having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect if what we have is better than their own then our legacy too should be better than their own for whom much is given much is not only expected is demanded legacy and one legacy that has God himself came down to live for us is the Lord Jesus Christ and we are to conform to his image praise the Lord by this shall men know that you are my disciples there is something that he has left behind that will become part of us he obeyed even to the death on the cross he offered himself a sacrifice jesus lived a sacrificial life that is the legacy he has left for us he lived a sacrificial life and so this morning i'm asking all of us all around the world if you die today what will you be remembered for by your children by your church by your colleagues by your mates your co-workers including those who are working for you you masters what will you be remembered for what will you be remembered for hallelujah your legacy is the fruit that you leave behind i don't know if somebody's understanding me praise the lord there's a song in hymn number 48 that speaks about bringing in the ships what is a ship hallelujah he says this the first stanza of that song says sowing in the morning sowing seeds of kindness sowing in a nude tide and the dewy eve waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheep second stanza says sowing in the sunshine sowing in the shadows fearing neither clouds no winter's chilling breeze by and by the harvest and the labor ended we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheep and the last stanza says going forth with weeping sowing for the master though the loss sustained our spirits often grieves when our weeping is over he will bid us welcome we shall come rejoicing bringing the sheep that chorus says bringing in the sheep what is a sheep a sheep is the evidence of the life that you live on earth in the context of this song what is a sheep when you go to the farm it says you are to bring the sheep of the first fruits of the harvest that is a part of it evidence of the harvest just a handful a sheep is a handful enough for everybody to see what will be the life that you live what will you be waving for the whole world to see as your legacy everyone that comes to you while you are alive everyone everyone you meet you are living something that will make the person remember that visit every human being you have an encounter with by the time you depart from that person and you are going there is something you have left behind the impression you left behind the testimony you leave behind is your legacy praise God there are people that will be missed when they are gone and there are some people that will, that will be rejoicing when they are gone praying that they don't resurrect and come back again 
because of the legacy you leave behind. Praise the Lord. There are some masters. The legacy is anybody that serves you does not prosper. They don't prosper. Amen. Just all around you is just wickedness, wickedness, wickedness. Ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see now, see where God is going in the ministry for perfection. It is part of perfection. Every man will give account of himself. Take note of it. That is the shift. The evidence. What are you going to wave before man and before God? Apostle Paul spoke about him desiring manifest good conscience before God and the man. Praise the Lord. There are legacies of confusion. Confusion. There's a legacy of ministry. It means we are Christians. And so, if we limit ourselves to our ministries, there are people that come to a ministry and they add value to the ministry. And there are people that come to a ministry and they destroy the ministry. See the legacies we are talking about. Hallelujah. You are building, they are scattering it. legacy. How will somebody be in a ministry and you hate the ministry? How can somebody have a spirit inside of you is just mischief. Your lifestyle is mischief. That is what you are known for. You are known for taking this head and this head and clashing. Then you are happy over it. Legacy. What kind of man being are you? There are some ministers that if you just mention their name, if you mention their name, amen. Their second, their son name is scandal. Scandal. They are pastors, they are prophets, they are ministers, shameless, very shameless. And I observe something that, 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 that that's the truth, you know, training, training is important, training is important, I'm telling you, amen. You may have, you may be born with a skill of playing football. But if that skill is going to be harnessed together for your good, you must go for training. If that skill is going to be useful, you must go for training. God may genuinely call you even from your mother's womb to see vision, to do miracles, signs and wonders, gift to even preach. Go for training. If you don't go for training, you will not know what that ministry entails, what it involves. And I discover most of the people that mess up ministry today, they have no form of training in the ministry or outside the ministry about leadership. So, they don't know what it is that leadership involves. So they act anyhow. I don't care that there, by your action, you are leaving a testimony behind. You are leaving a legacy behind. For good or for worse. People don't know it. It is unethical. There are unethical things. This that a minister, a true minister of God, should not be found. I'm saying this because all of you are watching me. You watch me. You watch me in your bedrooms. You can criticize me outside, but in your bedroom, you, you, you are watching me. 
In your social media, you do, you go to our website, you they will they watch, you go to YouTube, you hear me. I'm talking to you. It's unethical because you know, you know, you know what you are doing. That that woman that came to you for counseling and you end up sleeping with her, you know, number one. Anytime you carry microphone to stand to preach, she's looking at you. What are you saying? You know that when you somebody was in problem, he phoned you, he visited you, came for counseling for prayer. You say bring money for anything. You know that person is looking at you and knowing and placing you where you belong. Because there are ministers that will never do that. They are trained. You will never go to anyone that has gone to any school of theology. Bible school. Find out. None of them does these things. None. It's all this. After they receive anointing, they begin to see vision. They go and open shop. They are the ones that do that thing. Because they don't know the effect. They don't know about living legacies. They don't know so they don't care it is their life does not go beyond what they need now 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 they cannot endure hardship they cannot endure hunger they cannot endure the cross that goes with the genuine call of god all they see about is na 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 whatever i can do to get what i need na 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 i don't care if you don't come back tomorrow another new customer will come when you do that, you don't know you are living a legacy. I'm praying that somebody will listen to me and change. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm talking to the whole world. That you don't know the damage you are doing to your image. It doesn't matter. Those few people that come to speak on the day of your burial even the person speaking is only fulfilling your righteousness he knows how bad you are and they will say now he's with God <laughs> the truth is you are with God facing your judgment now he's with God don't argue about it for judgment comes after death praise the Lord unto reward or unto condemnation begin to think now if you die now what will be your story okay let me come home all of you that are worshiping bride assembly now the day you leave bride assembly and go what legacy do you leave in bride assembly what will you be remembered for? Will we miss you or will we be happy you have gone? Because I have had reason to call some ministers in time past to beg them to leave the church. So that, that is we should have a meeting. So that we will not go by fight. I, I have the authority to come and say, don't come here again. But just, I beg, I beg. Just let's let's make respect let's respect each other let it be that you left peacefully eh? but me and you you know say we don't live peacefully but so that they don't go say with a fight just just go just just go because you know you don't belong here the type of life. i amen imagine the sons of rechabites i feel this thing brother cosmos once told me this amen and it hit me very well he said don't be angry with those who have left don't be angry don't be angry with those who have gone he said you are angry because they have gone and they are doing things contrary to what you expect them to be doing out i said sure somebody who was here and i i said 
I taught here that by this Bible, and we're in the restoration ministry, it's restoration from error. We are coming back to the proper way of doing things. A prophet cannot have a church directly or indirectly. And the prophet lives and sets up a ministry. Some of them can't even read. They employ people they appoint as pastors. And then he becomes the overseer to be seeing vision. And I said, there is no such pattern in the restoration move in the Bible. You say I should go. He told me something. He said, why they were with you? They were with you and they have left. He said, they are, it is, it is a reflection of my success or my failure in bringing them up. He said, they are demonstrating what they learned while with me. And no matter how I argue, it, it's, it's, it's real. That simply means I was not able to impact it on them. He said, so stop blaming them. He said, blame yourself. Go back to the Lord and tell the Lord you failed. Because they are supposed to be a reflection of what they learned here like the Rechabites the sons of the Re but many people and I'm saying this to you pastors these are some of the things we want to encourage ourselves in the uh, ministers meeting these are things we should learn but the truth about it is it's not all Israel that is of Israel it's not all Christians that are of Christ. Jesus came to the Jews. He said, why can't you hear me? Understand me? It's because you are not of God. He that is of God, he heareth God's word. He said, my sheep heareth me. Heareth my voice. And the voice of a stranger. And this stranger includes hunger. It's a voice. It's a voice. Covetousness is a voice. They will not follow. Praise God. Legacy. Just believing that God will help us. Hallelujah. Just believing that, that this little exhortation will just, just help, you know, just help somebody. Just just help somebody to review life again before my children I hear people I hear people I hear a brother was telling me that his prayer life today it is thanks to his mother the father died left them for the mother to take care of the mother used the opportunity to let them know we are on our own now only God can help us brought them up five years, six years they were fasting and praying every day you must pray he said how the mother will, will uh, and they said they were even Catholics when it is time uh, Hail Mary, this one, this one that because they say it, when they are praying, he tried to keep quiet. He said, the mother will fear. Okay now. He said, the mother. Till today, that is the legacy the mother left. And he is a prayer warrior till today. Praise God. What are you imbibing into your children? Some of you are imbibing hatred on your children. Teaching them not to, to, to associate with this one, not to go near this one, not to go near this one. And the children are there wondering, what is the problem? You're not teaching them love. Teaching them to be isolated from people. Yes, your children must not associate with everyone. Then, let them know why you will not associate with not just this person 
but this character then they will live to remember you praise the Lord but teach them love teach them love teach them benevolence teach them to be givers teach them to be compassionate teach them to live like human beings if your children because you are wealthy they grow up wealthy let them know oh glory be to God blessed be the name of the Lord Proverbs chapter 22 verse 2 this is how he said he said teach them to note what they are saying here the rich and the poor meet together the Lord is the maker of them all wherever you are let the children know that it is by God's mercy by God's grace that you have a car I am driving you with a car to school and you are seeing some trekking to school does not make you better than them it is time and chance that has happened like this and that all of us it is God that made us both they will be humble they will not look down on anybody they will not think they are better than anybody teach them that teach them that legacy leave a legacy of love leave a legacy that when people come to you they get revived they get counsel when people come to you praise the Lord hallelujah a sister was sharing with me yesterday that somebody called her and was saying some real very weighty heavy thing that she had concerning another sister and this other sister now spiritually asking uh -uh, please who told you this he said no 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 but you say i should tell my husband that we should be praying how will I pray now when I don't know who say, say, and you know if I tell my husband my husband will call you and you must produce who said it, he said in that case no talk about it, no talk about it, no talk about it that's a devil that's a devil what legacy do you want to leave behind why are you going about sowing seeds of hatred why are you going about oh blessed be the name of the Lord why, are you, why, why do you live that type of life? The Bible says, I have been young and now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg bread. Why? Because his goodness, his righteousness live after him. He lives after him. Praise God. When they call your name, there are some people that you are careful to mention your son name. Even if it is only a like, like, likeness. I mean, a, a resemblance. Uh, just a coincidence. You are not from that family. But that you are bearing that name. You will not get what you are looking for. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Your children will suffer because of your deeds it will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus and so he said go and bring in the ships can we take that song go and bring in the ships hymn number 48 
Soaring in the shadow Tearing in the clouds No wind has seen the breeze Hallelujah Your legacy. Hallelujah. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 16, it speaks of a book of remembrance. The day that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hacking and had it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that taught upon his name. The book of remembrance. What will be written there as your legacy? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, Brother Chibuzo. Brother Chibuzo has a special number to sing. Now this song is, is a song uh, that goes like this. It says, fading away like the stars in the morning. He said, losing their light in the glorious sun. He said, thus will we pass from this earth and is toiling. He said, only remembered. We shall only be remembered for what we have done. Hallelujah. Only remembered. We shall only be remembered. Thus will we pass from this earth and is toiling. Only the truth that in life we have spoken. Only the seed that in life we have sown, this shall pass onwards when we are forgotten, but we shall only be remembered for what we have done. He said, Who is in the anthem? And who will tell the story? Will the lie hold? Will it scatter and run? Shall we at last be united in glory? We will only be remembered for what we have done. Chipuzo, can we hear you? stars of the morning losing their light in the glorious sun first 
sword will pass from the earth and his story. Disciple 